Hey, what's up? It's Ryan Florence here, and I wanted to show you around Reach Router really quickly, some of my favorite features. First up, uh, I really missed nested route configs where you can just list all of your routes right here in one spot. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't uh, embed them deeper in the app. You can do that too, because that makes a whole lot of sense for a team that's big. Uh, but it's also nice to see a handful of your routes and their nesting right here up top. So you can render a router, render some components inside of it, and then render some nested routes inside of there. Now, what does a router do? A router actually just looks at its children, checks out their paths, compares those to the location of the browser, and then picks the one that makes the most sense to render. So what does that mean? Well, that means that when we have ambiguous paths, like right here, we've got dashboard slash invoices and dashboard slash team, and then dashboard slash anything else. So if I come over here and I click on dashboard, click on the finance report, up here in the URL, this is matching this report ID. If I come and click on invoices, I'm at dashboard invoices, and that one matches this path. Now, the order doesn't actually matter. I could put this report way up top, and I still get invoices here, I get team here, and then if I click on finance report or usage report, those match. So how does that work? Router actually ranks each of these paths and assigns them a score and says which path is more important than the other. And so when two or three or four paths all match the URL, it looks at the score and says, well, this one's more important, so we'll use that. Another thing that I really love about this router is you can just render two of them. So here in the main screen, we've got a router that's rendering right there. And then up here, we have another router inside of the sidebar. And so that's how we get this nav. So we're gonna have two totally separate uh, spots in the app matching the URL and rendering whatever they need to render. Here's another thing I really like, this report right here. Maybe we've got a report that's special. And maybe this reports path is not report ID, but like my report. Well, this report ID is actually just a prop. So we could just say report ID equals, I don't know, one, two, three. If we save this, I can come over to one of these reports and now I can type in my report and we get one, two, three. Now let's go look at the report screen. So report just gets a prop reports dot report ID. So let's come and look at how these routes are rendered. So this one gets it dynamically from the URL. This one matches a static URL and then we can pass in whatever we need to. Now this stuff could be from the state of our parent component. User.id, maybe that's the report ID, I don't know. But you can just pass in props all you want, you can reuse these components however you'd like, they're yours. Uh, the only thing that the router needs is a path and it'll look at that path and decide what to do. Think about that path as key, right? The key prop in React matters to the parent or it matters to React. So this path is not really a part of the report uh, components API, uh, but it is something that the router is going to use to match, and we don't have to worry about it down inside of the report. Relative links. How long have you wanted relative links? Me? A very long time. Let's go and look at what these links look like for the finance and usage reports inside of the dashboard home component. So here we'll come to the dashboard home component, Link to, oh, so we don't have to do dashboard finance, or we don't have to bring in any sort of props to put that URL together. Uh, these links are all going to be relative, just like anchors. An anchor can actually have a relative link as well. So these are smart, they know which uh, route they belong to, and so their URL or their href will, will be correct all the time, no matter how deep or shallow we've rendered in the tree. Really nice, because now this, uh, this component is a lot more portable. We can embed it inside of a different part of the app, inside of a different route, and it will be relative to all of those paths. So this can be useful if you think about like, um, like a settings pop-up. So you want to change your settings, maybe you're at some URL, bring the settings modal up. Uh, 
you can have a whole set of new URLs um, at any other previous URL, and you don't have to do anything about that. Uh, it'll just happen. Focus management. Reach Router manages focus for you as it transitions from route to route. So in most apps, when someone uses the keyboard to navigate around, you'll notice that the focus remains on the link that they clicked. Now, if you're using an assistive device that reads the screen to you, this is really difficult because you have to now go and try to guess what part of the page changed. And it's, it's, it's difficult. So why doesn't a router manage this for you? It knows what pages have changed. Well, by default, Reach Router does that for you. So you'll notice we've got two routers here. One says primary faults because that's not the primary router. And this one is. Normally you just have one router up at the top. So by default, now we have some focus management. Let's change this CSS right here so we can see what has focus. And now you'll notice as I navigate around with the keyboard, the focus moves to the changed portion of the page. So this is fantastic because when I'm on dashboard, the screen reader is now going to read the dashboard. And when I hit tab, I'm not tabbing through the navigation over on the side of the page. I'm uh, navigating through the current page that changed. You'll notice if I come to the usage report, it focuses that. If I come back up to the dashboard, now it focuses the whole dashboard. And if I come back up home, it focuses the home page. So this is awesome. Most excited about that. I hope you enjoy Reach Router, and together we can all build a more accessible web.